We're down on the Kingsbridge Estuary today, targeting Flounder. Little rod benders get together. Down here with Scott Smy, Rich Albones, and a few of the other rod bender lads uh, stretch out along the creek we're on fishing today. We're gonna go over to Scott now, and we're gonna go through some bait ups and uh, some of the rigs we're using. Scott's lost one uh, with the weed, literally about an hour and a half into the flood. So uh, we'll hopefully we'll pull a few fish out of here today. So we have Scott Smoy. Hello. So on the, on the obviously, it's a bit different than the teen. Obviously, I normally use crab up there. I don't know about you, what would you normally use on the teen? Um, on the teen, it's, uh, it's generally crab and, uh, and a bit of worm for movement. But on Kingsbridge, it's, it's genuinely um, a worm river. Yep. It's using a ragworm, small ragworm up the hook to get your, your movement. And then number one bait on Kingsbridge, I've always found over the years, is maddies. Little harbour maddies that you You've can dig. You've actually dug these from dug this these creek. Dug these myself, yeah, dug it from this creek. And yeah. um, they just keep the movement going. And at the end of the day, that's what the flounders are feeding on. That's yeah. what they're searching around in the mud and the channels. They're looking for those... Uh, for those well, it's the uh, same those worm from, from what it's exactly, producing around here. Exactly, natural, yeah. So, natural so, food source for them. Yeah, it's number one bait. I always put a small red, uh, red bead above it. Um, What's the reason you put the red bead above well, it? Well, if you look at the maddies, that they're generally got that red sort of colouring to them, so it just helps with the uh, as a little bit of an attractor. And I always put a stop knot above that because the last thing you want when you're casting out is all your bait to actually slide back up the line away from your hook. So it concentrates all the bait in a in a really nice little tight confined area, ideal for the flounder to come in and home in on. So that's how generally I'll say a lot of bait up for and a lot of movement as well. Definitely, you've got to have movement. There's no point coming up floundering with with uh, with the dead worms. You've got a really good quality worms. You want to make sure that when you cast out and you come back in after 20 minutes, half an hour, those worms should still be moving if they're not then they're not attracting fish so for this sort of setup you've got really light with a light light little weight yeah i always go as light as i can for floundering because i generally find in these in these small creeks so like you say you 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 the lighter the approach, yeah. the, the better. So yeah. I always generally find that an ounce and a half to two ounce weight on a running ledger. Uh, sometimes I will put another bead in behind and a stop knot to actually act as a bolt rig. Um, but yeah, go as light as you can. That's 15 pound fluorocarbon. Um, there's a small sort of rubbing lead or a fluoro of 20 pound. And I use a braid. I think that's 16 pound braid right. on there. Nice and fine, same sort of dimensions or for thickness as around about three or four so pound line. So for the line. setup itself then? It's... It's, yeah, it's really light. I prefer using barbel rods. Um, I've got a barbel rod on here and a just and for the, the tip more than anything. Yeah, more yeah. than the tip, and, and it's uh, it's it's nice to actually uh, get some actual enjoyment out of the yeah. fish. The last thing you yeah. want to use is, yeah. is, is as I see people coming down there with big thick beach casters, and to be honest, you ain't going to do that no. well with thick no. beach casters. You really want something with a light tip that gives you maximum uh, so you enjoyment. So you can see the bite well. at yeah, the end exactly. of the day, and it's yeah, not putting no yeah. pressure on the on the fish at yeah. the same time, but. Yeah. I think we'll see a few today, don't you? I think so. I think fingers crossed. I think the tide's just coming up nicely now. I just lost what that one. I think that was a tidy fish yeah. and the way it was going yeah. in the weed, you could yeah. see it was diving from side yeah, to side. Yeah, actually brought it in on the on the retrieve and yeah. it seemed to take it straight away, didn't yeah. it? There's no bite to it at all. No, I mean usually I mean the problem with that sometimes is they're just grabbing the bottom of the worm yeah. and you're not actually uh, You want them to take that hook back. You really want with them flounder, to you want to make sure that when you get a bite, the most important thing with flounder is to not to strike them. Give them when as soon as I get a bite, I actually pull off on the bait runner about ten yards yeah. of line. Yeah. Loads of slack, yeah. let it and once it picks up that slack and moves off. People always say sit know, on your hands for a sit bite. On your hands. That's the best That's the best what way. would you how long would you normally leave a bite then for? I would leave it for two or three minutes. Yeah. Wait for it. If it's gone a couple of times and it's pulled off the slack and you've taken off more slack and it's gone again, then pretty so you much you know he's on there. But you know, they can, they're, they're masters of, yeah. of, of, of getting yes. rid of the hooks. Yes. And, and if you don't leave them long enough, then um, you think sometimes that you think it's got to be on there, so you no. wind in and, and they're yeah, not, and they're not. just literally just biting Mouthing on the end it. of the worm. So. Yeah, well, but, it goes to show at the end of the day, especially with the bait you've got there, though, you've got the movement on the bottom, and if it's just obviously taking a bait there, you want him to move the bait exactly. up and get to that hook point so it's down the yeah. back of him, really. I you? mean, sometimes the people, you know, when they're out floundering, they think that they're actually getting flounder bites, but another thing that you will get on these little creeks is mullet, and they will come up and there again, they will take the end of the worms off, and yeah. you think getting cracking bites, thinking, yeah, yeah, there's a flounder on there, it's actually mullet coming off and just taking yeah, the, the end of the worms. Yeah, obviously the size off. of the hook you're using, they're not. Yeah, not size, size two. 
new hook on yeah. there. And, and the other thing I do do is, um, is I, I give them a slight bend. Yeah, offset so them. I'll, yeah, offset them and also bend the shank. So it's almost like the carp fishing where you have a yeah. bent hook and you pull it back over your hand, it always twists and I've turns. I've shown that in a video before. So, uh, just a very slight bend. It just means that there's almost like an S, you know, a curved yeah. shape to the hook. And they find that harder to actually take it in take and it spit out. it back out. If so. you put an offset hook in a bit of paper, you put a normal hook in a bit of paper and attach it to line and pull it out through, the hook will come right out. If you offset that hook and pull that back out through the paper, it will, yeah. it will attach in every time. And I think that's very important yep. with flatty fishing, isn't it? 100%, yeah, yeah, yep, definitely. All right, mate, we'll let you get that back in the water yep, and cheers. hopefully we get yep. some. Fingers crossed. background now Scott's moved one of his rods right up to the left hand side of us open to uh, cover a bit more area to be honest one of the joys of floundering if it's not at work in whereabouts you are try something different I mean especially with the creek we're on at the moment you've got the mud banks you've got the channels you've got a lot of different areas what's going to hold hold the flounders up obviously the feeding on the maddies so uh, hopefully we can uh, see a fish out today fortunately Scott not 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 a bite on the rod at all Started re reading in, and um, it, what it must have done is the fish had been sat right next to the bait. He started retrieving, give it that movement it needed, gone straight for the bait and lip hooked, got it in. It seemed a de decent fish going left and then going right, and uh, unfortunately, as he went to turn the rod, it uh, come off the hook. But you win some, you lose some. But it is very cold down here today. Just open, we can see that flounder. Efforts paid off, the list got? Paid off, mate. In the end, we got one at last. Yeah, he's probably just knocking around two pounds. Yeah, I'd I would say, say so. It's a nice fish, mate, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, a couple of, couple of knocks. And it's only just the start of the back tide, yeah. Now, so I think Fingers we crossed get we get a few, a few more, but he, um, he sort of like give a few taps in and just sat there, yeah. give a bit of line, let him take you up back down, and uh, jobs are good. Mission accomplished. Just get a couple deal. of photos now, getting weight, and uh, return to fight another day. Beautiful fish, that's what we're after. So the tide's starting to ebb away now, get the movement. Only the one fish so far, but uh, hopefully we can pick something up now. It's starting to pick up a little bit too much, I think. I don't know what you. Yeah, I'd say so. It's a certain stage and it's starting to run too fast. 
Yeah. yeah. And then your bank's been sat on the floor, you'd be up in the air somewhere, wouldn't it? But sometimes that could be a good thing, but I think it's a bit too much, isn't it? Never know. We live in hopes.